Hey everyone, it's Intel here, and today we're going to be checking out a $20 gaming mouse and a $40 gaming keyboard from Pictech. Pictech is another one of those budget gaming brands that are pretty popular on Amazon. Most of their products have a lot of good reviews, which makes them sort of stand out, like Red Dragon. And Pictech actually reached out to me to review these products, and they sent them to me for free. So I'm really happy to test these products out for you guys and show you guys if they're good for MC. The unboxing experience was pretty underwhelming. For the mouse, you just get the mouse itself, some paperwork, uh, a little case to hold the weights, which I'll talk about later, and a disc, which I'm assuming is for the software. For the keyboard, you get the keyboard itself, an included wrist rest, which is pretty nice, and a keycap puller, which is something I definitely appreciate, along with some more paperwork. So starting with the mouse for $20, this sort of puts it in between the price range of the $12 Anchor Gaming Mouse I reviewed not too long ago, and a cheaper name brand mouse like one of the older Logitech G502s, which are between $30 to $40, I believe. One thing I noticed right off the bat is that this mouse is really similar to the Logitech G502. So it shares a really similar shape, which is an ergonomic right-handed shape that's more catered towards large hands and palm grip users. It has a ton of buttons, so on the top of the mouse, along with your left and right click and your scroll wheel, you have a DPI up, a DPI down, a button that toggles between different lighting effects. And then to the left of the left click, you have a button that acts as a triple click, so you press it once and it'll left click three times. So in theory, you could get really high CPS with this, however, I think if you were to use it on most servers, you'd get banned in a heartbeat, so I'd recommend leaving it disabled. On the side of the mouse, you have your two side buttons, along with a sniper button that temporarily lowers your DPI when it's held in. The sides are made of textured plastic, which makes it pretty easy to grip when you're using it. And then on the bottom of the mouse, you have a mode switch button, which toggles between different profiles that you can set up on the software, which I'll cover later. You have your mouse feet, which are a little higher quality than the ones on the $12 Anchor Gaming Mouse. And then you have a weight compartment, which stores up to seven weights. I think in total, it adds about 15 grams to the mouse, which isn't a lot, however, it is nice to have that customizability nonetheless. The sensor on this mouse is a PMW3327, which is actually a really, really good sensor for this price range. It's a better sensor than what's on the Anchor Gaming Mouse, and I think for like 95% of people, the sensor is going to be completely fine for them. Moving on to the clicks, the left and right click are pretty tactile and snappy, however, they are a bit tensioned. So coming from the Logitech G Pro Wireless, which is easily the best mouse to jitter click with, jitter clicking on this mouse was a little fatiguing over time, but the clicks on this mouse definitely aren't bad, and they actually feel pretty responsive. The lighting on this mouse is actually pretty solid. It's full RGB and fully customizable, and it has a really cool lighting strip at the base of the mouse that sort of reminds me of the Razer Mamba. One thing I don't like about this mouse is the cable. It has a pretty thick and firm braided cable that makes the mouse sort of awkward to control, so I'd really recommend using a mouse bungee if you have one. The last thing I want to touch over is the software. I'm not going to spend too much time explaining every single thing in the software. All the buttons are reprogrammable, so you can just select one and set it to whatever you want. You have different modes at the top of here, which are essentially just different presets for the mouse, and you can toggle between them through the button on the bottom of the mouse. Here we have the DPI settings, and this is so much better than some of the other budget gaming mice, which don't have a software and just have a DPI button, and there's barely any customizability at all with the DPI. With here, you can go from 200 to 12,400 DPI in increments of 100. For the lighting, you have a bunch of different lighting presets, and then you can actually customize the pulling rate of the mouse, and it goes up to a thousand pulling rate, which is really impressive for a $20 mouse. Once again, the PMW3327 is a killer sensor for this price range, so I'm really happy about it. So overall, this is probably the best budget gaming mouse that I've tried so far. It has a ton of features to it, it has some stuff that really makes it stand out from the Anchor Gaming Mouse, and it has a killer sensor that I cannot express how good it is for this price range. Yes, it does have some flaws, which I think most mice will have around this price range, but I think in terms of pure value and pure bang for the buck, this is as good as you're gonna get for $20. Now moving on to the keyboard, this keyboard is $40, $10 more than the Red Dragon K552, which I reviewed not too long ago. For that extra $10, you're getting a full-sized layout, an included wrist rest, and RGB, quote unquote. The RGB isn't actually per key RGB, it's just RGB zones on the keyboard, so you can't really customize the lighting besides the rainbow preset that it seems to have. That being said, there are a bunch of lighting effects that you can go through by holding down the function key and pressing the control lock button 
button. The switches this keyboard uses are Otemu Blues, just like the Red Dragon. These are a clicky alternative to Cherry Blues. Quality-wise, they're going to be just about as quality as Cherry MX Blues. A lot of people assume that Cherry knockoff switches are lower quality, which is completely false. If you're looking for quality switches, you should be looking at enthusiast-grade switches like Xelios. Unfortunately, it only comes with Otemu Blues, so if you like linears or tactiles, then this isn't the keyboard for you. The quality is also a step up from the Red Dragon since it has a metal top plate, which I think is aluminum. It's cool to the touch and overall feels more quality, however, the rest of the build is plastic. The keycaps are thin ABS with that really nasty gamer font, which I have no idea why these budget brands tend to use. It's absolutely disgusting. And the wrist rest, which is a nice inclusion, is just about as plain as you can get. It's just a piece of plastic that connects to your keyboard. The stabilizers on this board are pretty noisy and rattly, however, that's something you tend to see on a lot of budget boards. Overall, if you're looking for a full-size mechanical keyboard, you like clicky switches, and you like rainbow lighting effects, then for $40, this is a really good option for you. Anyways guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Huge shout out to PicTech for the products, I really appreciate it, and I really hope that I can do more of these product reviews in the future. So if you guys couldn't tell by the camera quality, I did get a new camera, it's a Panasonic G7. This is gonna be my first time using it in a video, but I have a bunch of plans to utilize it in future videos, and I'm really excited for that. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace out.